wow. Isn't it wonderful that we can praise God vertically and we can fellowship horizontally? We welcome you here. Thank you so much, Pastor, for hosting us. Uh, I'm Steve and this is Rowan, and we'll be taking this trip with you this weekend. Please understand that you are entering a prayer experience starting tonight, and it continues through tomorrow. Uh, you can see on the screen right now the steps we're going to take in this progression. The steps will be going one segment at a time, and one builds on the next. So what we are doing tonight is just the first two parts. We will continue tomorrow, so by all means, be part of that as we enter into a conversation with God. You take that time to get to know him, to connect with him, to encounter him. And then we can recognize, and some of us may have known him in the past. I hope you know him again. So let us acknowledge God together. We will have a testimony to start us on this road. Good evening, church. I'm Joel, by the way, Joel Guerra, for those of you who don't know me. All right, so basically, uh, a little back, a little back ago, I was asked to speak on, um, to give a testimony on my acknowledgement of God. And as I thought about this, I prayed about it a lot over the past few days, and I've been really putting a lot of thought into it. And I kind of realized that uh, there wasn't, I was, I was really looking for a specific moment, a moment where I said, wow, God is real. Wow, God is there for me. And I realized that there wasn't one exact moment that I could think of. And I don't know, I thought, I think this might be because I was raised, um, I was raised Adventist, born and raised Adventist. My parents have always uh, put me in the church, encouraged me to be in the church. They've never forced me, but they have encouraged me always to be here, to be involved. And they've always taught me about how important it is and about uh, how important the, God, the love of God is. So uh, I think for me, it has been more of a progression, I could say. Uh, just more and more as time passes and as through, I go through different experiences, um, uh, I accept God and I acknowledge God more and more and realize how great he is. So I just um, wanted to re uh, share a couple of the few experiences. So uh, because of, as I mentioned, my parents um, always encouraging me to be a leader and to be involved in the church, one of the things that I've done is being a youth leader. Uh, I started being a youth leader, I think, at the beginning of high school and freshman year. And part of being a youth leader, uh, for those of you who are youth, you guys know that every summer, uh, VBS Vacation Bible School comes around. And although no one says, oh, all the youth leaders have to help, we do uh, usually volunteer to be VBS leaders, uh, whether we're leading out the games or the Bible study or we're just in charge of a certain age group or in the kitchen. We all do come together and work for that. And uh, VBS, although it's not for me, I've noticed that I end up, do, I end up acknowledging God through this because for those of you who don't know me, uh, and, and, uh, you get, and those of you who do know me, you guys know that I love, I love kids. I love uh, being with kids, spending time with them, being able to teach them. Uh, and I think it's really cool how they look up to you. Kids will look up to anyone who spends time with them. And so it's cool how much influence and how much good you can do for them. And through this week, although it's only one week long, I've noticed um, how much these kids look up to us and how much we can teach them about the love of God. Uh, because we, we honestly, like I, like I said, I was raised Adventist and I was raised in the church, but we don't know how much emphasis is, putting on, is being put on God's love at home with these kids. So it, even though it's only one week, uh, it is through that that I've realized how much, how much influence we can have on these kids, teaching them about the love of God, because I truly believe that that is one of the most basic principles that kids need to understand at a young age if they're going to love God for the rest of their life, is that he loves them no matter what. And that's always what we emphasize at VBS. And so throughout the week, how much, uh, seeing how much these kids learn and how much, um, although they're so young, how their hearts can be touched and how it, it's almost as if they have the most faith because you see them on Monday, they come in with their parents and they're a little scared. By Wednesday, they have four friends next to them 
who we've never even met, but they brought from school. And it's, it's, it's seeing that God, God touched their hearts and they, they know and they understand that and they bring their friends. It's seeing that, that even though it's for them, it has, um, it has caused me to acknowledge God and see how, see how great he is. Um, because, he, because leading up to VBS, we, are, we pray a lot. We, our, team, our team, the youth leaders, we're always praying. And, uh, to give you guys an example, literally I think this week I got a Facebook notification from the VBS group that we are already starting planning it. It's, what is it, March? And VBS isn't until June or July. And that's how much work and prayer and time goes into it. And seeing God work through all these kids, work through us to help these kids learn about God has been truly a place where I can acknowledge God. Another um, example that I have, another, another experience that I have is through Habitat for Humanity. Um, Habitat for Humanity, as many of you guys know, is a Christian organization. Uh, I, work, I work with them through school. Uh, I think I've been in it since sophomore year. But what they are is a Christian organization that works to provide affordable housing for families who don't have and who can't afford um, a place to live. And so basically what my school does is every year we raise, I think, $40,000, and we send 40 kids to West Virginia. By the way, West Virginia is the poorest state uh, in the U.S., so that is one of the places where people, you can find people, the highest percentage of people, without safe, affordable housing. So we do like to put a lot of emphasis on there, but what we do is we send 40 kids to uh, West Virginia, and in just one week, this is another just one week experience, and kind of, I'm, I'm kind of doing this to put emphasis on how much God can do in just one week, and how much he can do if we spend our entire life with him. So if just one week, we build an entire home, we do what's called a blitz build, and we build an entire home for this family. And when I say entire home, I mean when we get there on Monday, it's just a slab of concrete, little slab of concrete, dirt around it. On Friday, when we're done building, we've put up all the walls, we've put up siding, we've put up doors, we've put up windows, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got the roof, we've got the roof up, and then also the framing of the interior walls. So basically, when we leave, all that's left is the plumbing, electricity, and uh, drywall, which is left to professionals appropriately because you wouldn't trust me around that. Like, just, it would be bad. So um, we do all that in just one week. And how I've seen God through this is that on Monday when we get there, we spend 30 minutes, because it is a Christian organization, uh, just praying for the house and blessing the week that we are about to spend building on it. And one of the mo coolest things that I've seen is being able to pray with all, all the students, all my peers who also come, and also the family and the people who are the leaders of the organization, we all uh, kind of gather in a circle around the household hands, and we pray to God. And it's really cool because I don't know what denomination the other people are. I don't know what denomination the, uh, the family is. I don't even know if the other peers around me even believe in God. Yet we all come together, and we share a moment where we can bless the house and, and pray, pray for blessing on the house and uh, unite to God and say, hey, we can't do this. We're only here because of you. Because we, you only, we're only here because you helped us raise all the money to get here, and we're only going to be able to finish this and give this, give this house to the family through you, Lord. And throughout the entire week, uh, we and me and, and the whole group, we spend a lot of time in prayer, and then by the end of the week when the house is done, we also take another, we take some more time to do a closing ceremony and pray, pray around the house again. And I've seen God through this, and I've seen him work through this because I see my peers be touched. I see peers who I've never heard talk about God by the end of the week. They're like, wow, like there has to be something with the fact that this is a Christian organization because I don't know how we just built an entire house in one week. It's not, it's not something that we can do without God. And we see the families uh, who are usually Christian, they're crying and they're just thanking us so much. Um, and they really, they really always talk to us. Um, the families usually get some time like, to talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, and they talk to us about how great God has been to them. And so I see God working through, through them. And so this has been another experience where I've been able to acknowledge God because I see him working, uh, working through, through me and through others to bless others while also blessing myself. Because although I'm there to, uh, for the benefit of other people to not necessarily for the benefit of other people, but to service other people and to provide something for them. I've noticed, just like VBS, I end up being just as blessed because I see everything that God can do through, through prayer. But so, so obviously, like I said, it's been a progression, and as time goes on, I acknowledge God more and more, and I accept his love more and more. But if there's one place that I could say, this is where I've met God, this is where I know God from, 
it's not really necessarily uh, a church experience or a youth experience, but it's on my knees next to my bed praying to the Lord. And I think that is just where I have truly come to know God uh, and, and get to meet him. Because there's a difference between knowing God and knowing that he exists, accepting that, and having that personal relationship with God and acknowledging his love and his never-ending forgiveness for us. Um, one example that I, that I thought of was um, a son who, who grew up with his mom, a single mom. The son knows his father exists because he, he couldn't be born without a father. So he knows, he knows that the father's there, but knows nothing about him. He does, but, but then there's the other example where a son knows their father and has that personal relationship with them and talks to them every day. So it's that same difference applied to us and God as the father. And so it is through prayer that I have been able to get down on my knees and just surrender it all to God and say, and say, God, I'm here to acknowledge that you are the one true God. You are the one who loves me, for cares for me, who cares for me and died for my sins, Lord, because that is who you are, and I can't do anything that I do. All the things that I do at church, all the things that I do at school, um, all the people that you put around me, Lord, I know that they're there because of you. And it is through prayer that I have been able to not only speak to him, but also hear him. I can take time every morning, take time before I go to sleep to um, just get down on my knees, pray to him, talk to him about my needs, but also listen to him because, I mean, being God, obviously he has great things to say and he always knows what he's doing. He's always proven himself. He's always shown that he's got the plan. Even when I try to go against it, even when I'm like, no, God, you don't know. Like, what are you thinking? You know, he just comes in and he just, not a shove, but just gives me a light push. He's like, hey, like, I, I think I know what I'm doing. I'm God. And so... It's through these experiences like this and the opportunities that he's given me that I have been able to acknowledge God and ultimately grow closer to him uh, through prayer. And I, and I praise him for this. I praise him that he, is, he always forgives me because I've messed up so many times. And I praise him that he is always there to listen to my prayers and, and, uh, and answer my prayers and talk to me. And I also praise him for this, for this uh, weekend, this conference, because uh, truly this conference is is an experience to be able to commit ourselves to get to know God more, to get to know that same God who helps the kids, to get to know the same God who, uh, who helps, us go to, to helps us go to West Virginia. So this conference is a great opportunity to commit to changing our lives through prayer uh, and acknowledging, acknowledge, acknowledging him truly and getting to know him. Uh, so this is my testimony, and I hope you guys are blessed and you guys can be blessed this weekend. He's running away with the mic. Happy Sabbath, everybody. My name is Kalila Brucewell, and I am visiting you guys all the way from north in Toronto, Ontario. So it is my privilege and my honor that Pastor Black asked me to come and do something with you. So right now what we want to do is, with us being on the section of my acknowledgement of God, we are going to have a worship thought right now. So I want to ask you guys a question. How do you acknowledge God? So we're going to do a little activity, okay? The focus isn't on me. The focus is on Daddy. I call Daddy God. Um, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes right now. Sabbath is about celebration. Sabbath is about spending time with him. This is about prayer. And prayer is simply communicating with him. So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey, and I'm going to ask you to have a little conversation with him right now. So how do you acknowledge God in the world? Do you see him in the stars? Do you see him in the sun and in the moon? Do you see him through the nature when you're driving to work? Do you see him when the buds are blossoming on the flowers? Do you see him in the squirrels and the animals that are pesky to you, but still have a purpose in this world? How do you see him outside when you look at the world? What is evidence every single day of your life that tells you that there is a God and he does exist? 
Do you actually take the time when you're driving to work, going to school, going from one place to another? Do you get to see the seasons change? Do you see him? Do you acknowledge that that is him? And if you don't, then maybe what happens is that after this weekend or even when you're going home, you start looking at the world in a completely different way. So we, we see from the outside that he does exist. But now the question is, is how do you acknowledge him for yourself? Here's my next question. Is he simple words like alpha and omega, beginning and the end? Is he lofty on on high? The reason why I am down here on the floor with you guys is because we like to keep him distant. We like to think that he is heavenly and we don't want to think about him right beside us. How do you acknowledge him in your life so that he is personal and one-on-one -on -one with you? Is he your provider? Not just the person that the employer, but he's the one that put you in the job to pay the bills. When you're not able to pay something and what we like to quote unquote call a coincidence, do you acknowledge that that is him? He's my stylist. When you're running out the door and you gotta put something on and you're like, what am I supposed to wear right now? And he puts something on you and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I look good. Is he your doctor and your nurse? Has he healed you or somebody else in your family? And even though it may not be healed in the way that you think something glorious and miraculous and godly has come out of it, has he been your lawyer? When you have to deal with something and you're like, how do I stand up for something? How do I defend? And you're like, take it over, Lord. Do you see him as your protector? When you're driving somewhere, you're going somewhere, and you're about, to, something's about to happen, and then all of a sudden something stops, and you realize that in that brief moment, your life was saved, or you could have been in something, do you say thank you? Do you see him as your teacher? So that when you're going through hard times, as much as things are happening to you, you're like, what am I supposed to learn? And when you feel that there's a storm or a hurricane going on in your life, and I could tell you about those things, but that you still see the peace. Do you know that that's him? Do you see him as your friend? The person that you can talk to at all times of the night, whether your best friend's up, your boyfriend's up, your husband's up, your wife is up, your mother's up. Do you see him as the person you can talk to at all times? Do you see him as your comforter? When times are really hard and you want to cry or you want to break down or you want to give up or you want to let go or you just can't stand it anymore, do you see him as the person you can put your head on his lap and say, comfort me right now because it's just unbearable? How do you see God? Because this is where we start. How do you acknowledge him? Is he far away or is he right beside you? And it's okay because there are people in this room, at one point in time I was someone in this room going, I don't get any of this. We have youth and young adults, we have adults in here that are like, I don't know any of this. How do I begin? How do I begin to acknowledge him? How do I begin to talk to him? It starts with hello. An acknowledgement with anybody who will become your friend, your partner in life, or anything starts with hello. Hi, how you doing? A few minutes ago, you just met somebody completely new and you have no idea how they're gonna end up in your life. But it started with a happy Sabbath. 
that relationship takes a little bit longer and then you say, this is how I'm having my day. But then when he returns back with his response, whether it be in a song, in a scripture, in a vision, with someone giving you direction, with someone saying, I prayed over you, or I have something to tell you, do you acknowledge that that is him? We have to start by acknowledging God the great that he is on the outside of everything, but we also have to acknowledge him beside us. I call him daddy. I call him daddy because that's exactly who he is when my family is dysfunctional. That is something that he promises to say that he will take care of me. So when I grew up being detached from a father and I grew up as an adult and I learned that there was a being that as much as he is not tangible, we want to sometimes sit back and say, God is not tangible. I can't see him. I can't feel him. But I want to ask you to open your eyes and see that he is everywhere. If you take the opportunity, even if you choose, even if you've been walking with him for a very long time, Tonight, tomorrow, on your way home, God, Daddy, Lord, Christ, Holy Spirit, Provider, Comforter, anything that it is that he says that he will be to you, show me you today. That is a challenge. And when you challenge him, he will come back and be like, all right, let's have a good day. He's been my date sometimes. He's been the person, the gentleman that's opened up the door because I've got so many groceries in my hand and you're, and you're like, can you help me? If you don't know your Bible, and that is okay, I can tell you that there were so many things that he can say that he will be for you, your brother, your sister, your mother, your maker, your creator, every single thing. Make it personal. Recognize not only is he in front of you, but he is beside you and he is with you. So that is my time. But I'm challenging you to acknowledge that he exists because he is your creator, because he does love you, and that he did send, it, death, sent his son to die for you. Have yourself a blessed Sabbath. Amen. Hallelujah, Khalil. Amen. Thank you for that. Personal. Making it personal. You know, in Scripture, most of the days, God did not do a bang to really get your attention. Whenever he did, the most common response is people are down flat. It's pretty easy to acknowledge God then. Can you acknowledge God when it's not coming that way? If you were up here giving your testimony right now, acknowledging God, when did God become real to you? Not to Joel, who was testifying, but to you. Not to Kalila, who was testifying, but to you. I'll tell you what, we need everybody to stand right now. Go ahead and stand where you are. And please move to the aisle and come on up here. We're going to get as many people as we can up here on the platform. Just come right on up. That's on the everyone. platform. Come on up. We want everyone to be part of the experience. Come everyone. on up. Come on. Yes. Don't be shy. See a couple of you. Come on. <laughs> Terrific. This is terrific. We're like family now. Yeah. Terrific. Terrific.
For some of us, this is the first time at a prayer conference. I just want to let you know what we just did. We just did an altar call. Thank you for accepting Jesus as your Savior. <laughs> Amen. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. What I'd like you to do is this. I'd like for you to take one hand, doesn't matter if you're right or your left, but one of them and put it above your head, higher than your head, just one hand. You got it up there? Hold it up there, and now you need to make a choice. You need to either stick up your thumb or your little pinky, one or the other, but not both. So you choose which one, either the thumb or your pinky. And just keep it up there. Now here's what I want you to do next. I want you to find one other person who is holding up the same appendage as you. And when you have that person, the two of you go sit down together any place in the sanctuary. It does not have to be where you were. So find somebody who has the same appendage, thumb with thumb, finger with finger. The two of you go find a seat together. Then I'll tell partner? you what to do. He's working, he's working. You find, okay, okay. <laughs> Stay with your partners. <laughs> partner stay here with me if you do not have a partner stay on the platform with me and with Rowan Anybody else? No partner. Who needs a partner? Come right here. There you go. There you go. Two of your partners. All right. If you have not introduced yourself, by all means, do that. And Rowan and I have two questions for you, but we need to find out who goes first. And this is the way we find out who goes first. If you did your thumb, hold your thumb out. If you did a little finger, hold the little finger out. You need to see who has a longer thumbnail or a longer fingernail. You're going to go first. Which one of you has it longer? We're getting to know each other very intimately. I love this. Amen. <laughs> All right. So long nail person, raise your hand so we know who you are. Long nail person, okay, you're going to go first on this question. And then when Rowan says it's time, she's going to call for a switch. And then it's time for the short nail person to go with the same question. Does that make sense? All right. So you can put your hands down now. And here's question number one. Remember, we're acknowledging God, acknowledging God. So here's question number one. The people who influence my life toward God include, for example, my parents. I grew up in the faith, so my parents would be some of those people that I would include. But there were also other people at church. Wh who would you include? So long nail person, go ahead and answer this question to your partner. Go ahead. So now we're going to have you guys switch. So all those who have the shortest nail, let me see the, let me see your pinky swing. All right. So now you're going to answer that question. Who are the people that influenced your life towards God? All right. Are we wrapping up here? Doing well? Yes. That's <laughs> good. Got a couple head nods. Okay. So have you guys gotten to know each other a little better? From cuticle to tip? Awesome. All right, so the next question, we're gonna move on to the next question. And the one who is going to start that one is the one who just showed us the year, their shortest nail, right? So those of you guys have the shortest nail, you're going to look at your partner and answer the question. A time when I said, God, you are God to me was when? Take it away. A time when I said, God, you are God to me. All right. 
And now to those who I admire very much, because as you see, I can't grow my nails. The ones with the longest nail, it is your turn. So switch. attention please go ahead and stay with your partner right now but we want to get some feedback from you we have some roving microphones here so uh, let's go back to that first question the people who influence my life toward God include if you're willing to share with us somebody who influenced your life toward God who would it be just raise your hand um, it was the pastor I was sharing it was the pastor of the church of the Seventh Avenue Church that I came to, um, I don't know if he's watching on live stream or not, but it's Pastor Carl Berman. Um, when I came to the church, I was 40 years old. I owned a restaurant. I was on top of the world. I, but I felt God's calling. I was coming, and I started coming to the church. And Pastor Berman and I met a lot. We prayed a lot together. And one day, he said to me in the session, because I was living with a woman, I was just, I was living for me. And he said, Doug, he goes, you can't continue to live outside of God's will and expect him to bless you. But he did it in such a loving way. It wasn't judgmental. And I kind of took it in. And then after my baptism and stuff, he ended up, he and his family moved away. I thought I'd never see him again. And um, I started to realize in my own walk, I said, he loved me enough to say that to me. Wow. And then as God would have it, he and his family moved back to our conference. I didn't know he was back until I saw him at camp meeting. And I walked up to him. I didn't say a word at first. I just grabbed him in this big bear hug. And he's not a really big guy. I probably lifted him up <laughs> off his feet. And I just kept saying, thank you, thank you. And he was like, for what? And I said, and I reminded him of that conversation. I said, you love me enough to say that to me. Wow. And I tell people today he was the first man to show me jesus christ Amen. a lot of people have told me about jesus but he was the first one he to show it. me put it with flesh on thank you let me just ask thank you. how many of the rest of you had somebody outside of your family who influenced you towards god just raise your hand okay and then how many of you say would say it was somebody in my family one of my family members relative wow both both terrific you know what if god isn't real then this whole prayer experience is make-believe. Hmm. If God is real, we are now entering into dialogue with Him. We worship Him as the Almighty. He holds us as our Daddy. He is both. Only God can be both. And so we are into dialogue with this God. She 
are here in the presence of the Lord. Accept the mercy that is falling as we sing. Mercy is falling, falling. Would you lift your hands with us? Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord. I know. Tired of running? Tired of running, running. Be still and know He's in control. Here in, Here in the presence of the Tired of running. time family mercy mercy is falling falling we lift our hands to you Jesus for we know we're in the presence of you're in the presence of the privilege to lead us in a, a prayer that is uh, practical and acknowledging God, something that I think um, uh, we like to do here, and I get to teach you if you don't know it. So, if you don't know, if you've, you're running out of ways to acknowledge God, just think of praising God or acknowledging Him through A through Z. So, if we were to think of, 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 a, of a way to describe God and we were to say, God, you are A. Someone give me an attribute of God that starts with A. How about B? Beautiful. How about C? Okay, so now you guys get it. We're going to do a prayer together, okay? We're going to go A through Z. It's going to go very fast, but this is our prayer to him. We're going to acknowledge him. But instead of just shooting out the attributes of God, I want you to say, Lord, you are my awesome God. You are beautiful to me. Can you guys do that? So here we go. We're going to acknowledge God A through Z. So if you ever run, here's a very practical way to acknowledge God. Here we go. God, you are A. You are B. Beautiful. The best. You are C. Caring. Anyone else? Compassionate. Comfort. Lord, you are D. Delightful. Dependable. Dominion of all. Oof. Yeah. Lord, you are E. What else is he? Extra. Ooh. Enthusiastic. Yeah, Lord, you are F. Faithful. Friend. Lord, you are G. Gracious. Glory. God. Lord, you are H. Heavenly. Happy. Holy. Healer. Lord, you are I. Indescribable. 
Infinite. Innovative. Jay, you are Jay. Joyful. Just. Lord, you are K. Kind. Don't say compassionate. Lord, you are L. Yes. Lord, you are O. Oh, don't say awesome. <laughs> Omnipotent. Omniscient. All of. Lord, you are N. Oh, M. Sorry, M. Mighty, merciful, Lord, you're in. Nice, that's my son. Lord, you're, did I, M, L, M, N, O. I went, oh, oh now I can't spell. P, let's go, Lord, you're, you're P. Powerful, praiseworthy, passionate. Oh, I, I lost my train here. P, R, is R next? Q. He's a quiet spirit, maybe? What else? It's quirky. quirky. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He's unpredictable. Hey, where am I? Q. R. Righteous. Reverence. S. Savior. Sufficient. T. Trustworthy. Lord, you are you. Unique. Understanding. Where am I? You. V. Vict victorious. Lord, you are. You gotta help me with my spelling here. X. Excellent. W. Wonderful! Wow! Wow! He's worthy! Why? Youthful! X! Man, I'm all over the place! X! Excellent! Whatever you said! Y? Oh, we did Y. Last one, Z. He is Z. Zealous. Zealous. If, if you ever get lost for words, you just want to acknowledge God. Pray A through Z. Pray A through Z. You know, after 40 years of seemingly not hearing from God, Moses saw him at the burning bush, out taking care of the sheep. What's your name? I need to know who you are. And he said, I am. Or I am that I am that I am. In other words, in the past, before you were born, I am. Right now, when you and I are living, he is, I am. A hundred years from now, he is. So if God is I am, what does that make us? Let me try this. If God is I am, then my name is I am not. I'm getting this from Louis Giglio, okay? Because otherwise I'm claiming to be God, but I'm not. So are you ready for this? I know I am, which makes me know that I am not. How do I know I am not? Because I know I am. You got it? We're acknowledging who God is. We've taken the first step. 